Let's talk about employment and max employment. Claudia, are we there or getting there? The U.S. labor market's in a really good place, right? It's, it, it's pointed, it's, it's been cooling off some, right? And that is not the direction that we need things pointed. We need a very strong labor market. And we have seen the unemployment rate uh, drift up, particularly since early this year. So that's that's a problem, and we need we need more of the job gains. The hiring rate has has kind of lagged behind right now. So I don't know if I'd call it maximum employment, but I absolutely agree with Powell that we are coming into this in a position of strength. And what the Federal Reserve showed us today is that they are going to defend that strength by cutting interest rates. Well, well, that's the needle I want to thread here, because Powell kind of made it clear, or at least tried to make it clear, that this rate cut was more about supporting a relatively strong labor market rather than sort of saving us from economic weakness. Of course, there's been a lot of hay made about the SOM rule and its recession signal. And you yourself have already said that, look, there are distortions in the labor market with regards to increasing uh, participation that sort of throws that rule off its kilter just a little bit here. Are we still, even if not headed towards a recession, is there still some risk of meaningful economic softness that we should be paying attention to? There absolutely is risk of softness. Again, the most disconcerting statistic that we have right now on the U.S. labor market is the hiring rate. And it is back to levels of 2014 when the unemployment rate was 6%. So if you're out there trying to find a job, this is not the same labor market as we, if you have a job. The layoff rate is really low, which is great. But getting, you know, getting the job right now has gotten uh, quite notably more difficult. And if that continues... The unemployment rate will continue to drift up and the payroll gains will will falter. So that there there absolutely is a risk and it's better to act now and the Fed do what it can to kind of stabilize labor market, give a really reinforce we are going to continue this strong recovery. And I, I think this was absolutely the right move to make. And it was them coming in and, as Powell said today, recalibrating. Hmm. Just Rates were just a little too high for where they were comfortable with what they'd learned about the labor market. So this might be a silly question, but if I'm a CEO and I just see a 50 basis point cut from the Fed, what do I say to myself? I'm like, oh, we're good. I don't have to lay off Tom. Like, how does that, how does that change? The Fed's actions today... I think, Relative to uh, feds of the past, so relative to Fed history, this was a pretty bold move to step into an easing cycle with a half a percentage point cut. And the message that uh, Powell was conveying, I think, is the appropriate message. Was this this is a you know vote for the soft landing mm -hmm. that no recession, get inflation down. And I would think if you're a business executive, that's exactly what you want to expand and grow your company into. So that that's the intent of this, and it's trying to get ahead of problems as opposed to being. In history, the Fed has tended to be more reactive right. when things start to fall apart in the labor market. And this how Fed is trying to get ahead of it. So kind of prevent the U3 from rising versus sort of waiting for it or wanting it to go lower, like that distinction. It, it also feels like the Fed has like a zero tolerance for the unemployment rate to drift higher. Is that fair? Certainly, at Jackson Hole, Powell said further cooling is neither welcome nor necessary. That doesn't mean, you know, today's half a percentage point rate cut doesn't mean the next time the unemployment rate, you know, takes up, it'll, that'll be the same outcome. But it does say that the, the Fed is watching this, and this is, you know, they want to have uh, the labor market, you know, continue to stay in a strong place. Now, we have to remember that it takes time for interest rates to work their way through the economy. And it's a pretty, uh, you know, it's a tricky, it's tricky to actually, you know, even understand after the fact what the effects were. So so we should not think of that we, the cooling we've seen in the labor market, it's not going to be undone by one decision today. Uh, it's going to be a process and how the Fed kind of reacts to that information well, as it comes in. But we did know they're going to make a whole series of cuts. Uh, it may not be this big every time. But we're, you know. Absolutely. Basically pricing one in for November 7th, that meeting, and December 18th. With regards to those lags, those long and variable lags, and how we talk about it uh, here, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion that the Fed was already late to the party. I'm not sure I buy that, but it, that's what a lot of people have said. Does 50 basis points catch them up, or is this still going to be, for the next two or three meetings, 
them playing that catch up? The Fed is just starting their easing cycle. So we're and and they had left the federal funds rate at you know an elevated level for some time. It was over a year from when the federal when the funds rate hit its peak a little over five percent until today. So the you know there is still the interest rates coming out of the Fed still are restrictive, and and it's going to take several meetings of cuts before it's uh, not that's not the case. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say this is they're behind, and we're going to see these large cuts going forward in rapid succession. That certainly was not what their projections yeah. the, from the Fed officials were telling us. But it does show that this is a Fed that's willing to be flexible and respond to the conditions that come in, and mm-hmm. as you know, they change. And that I think really, this cycle has been so outside of the history books that to have policymakers that are willing to you know, roll with it and react and recalibrate, that's that's the best we can really ask for right now. 